Section 44 of Wessex Poems by Thomas Hardy. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Libby Garn. The Fire at Tranter Sweetley's. They had long met as Sundays, her true love and she, and at junketings, maypoles, and flings. But she bowed with a thirtover uncle, and he swore by noon and by night that her goodman should be neighbor Sweetley a gaffer oft weak at the knee from taking a summit more cheerful than tea who tranted and moved people's things she cried pray pity me not would he hear then with wild rainy eyes she obeyed she chid when her love was for clinking off with her the parson was told as the season drew near to throw o'er the pulpit the names of the pair as fitting one flesh to be made the wedding day dawned and the morning drew on the couple stood bridegroom and bride the evening was past and when midnight had gone the folks horned out god save the king and anon the two home along gloomily hide the lover tim tankins mourned heartsick and drear to be thus of his darling deprived he roamed in the dark athart field mound and mere and almost without knowing it, found himself near the house of the tranter and now of his dear, when the lantern light showed him arrived. The bride sought her charmer, so calm and so pale, that a northern light had thought her resigned. But to eyes that had seen her in tide times of weal, like the white cloud of smoke, the red battlefield's veil, that look spake of havoc behind. The bridegroom yet latered a beaker to drain, then reeled off to the linhay for more, when the candle-snuff kindled some chaff from his grain. Flames spread, and red vlankers, with might and with main, and round beams, thatch, and chimney-ton roar. Young Tim away yawned, rafted up by the light, through brimble and underwood tears, till he comes to the orchard, when crooping their right, in luth of a codlin tree bivering with fright with only a night rail to screen her from sight his lonesome barbary appears her cold little figure half naked he views played abruptly by the frolicsome breeze her light tripping totties her ten little toes all bare and besprinkled with fall's chilly dews while her great gallied eyes through her hair hanging loose sheened as stars through a tardle of trees she eyed'n and as a weir hatch is drawn her tears penned by terror afore with rushing of sobs in a shower were strawn till her powers to pour em seemed wasted and gone from the heft of misfortune she bore o oh, tim my own tim i must call ee i will all the world hath turned round on me so could you help her who loved ye though acting so ill could you pity her misery feel for her still when worse than her body so quivering and chill is her heart in its winter a woe i think i mid almost have borne it she said had my griefs but one by one come to hand but oh to be a slave to thick husband for bread and then upon top o that driven to wed and then upon top o that burnt out of bed is more than my nature can stand tim's soul like a lion even and outsprung tim had a great soul when his feelings were wrung feel for ye dear barbary he cried and his warm working jacket about her he flung made a back horsed her up till behind him she clung like cheel on a gypsy her figure uphung by the sleeves that around her he tied over piggeries and mixins and apples and hay they lumpered straight into the night and finding by long where a halter path lay at dawn reached tim's house only seen in their way by a neighbour or two who were up with the day but they gathered no clue to the sight then tender tim tankins he searched here and there for some garment to clothe her fair skin but though he had breeches and waistcoats to spare he had nothing quite seemly for Barbary to wear, who, half shrammed to death, stood and cried on a chair at the cattle she found herself in. There was one thing to do, and that one thing he did. 
he lent her some clouts of his own, and she took em perforce, while in em she slid, Tim turned to the winder, as modesty bid, thinking, oh, that the picture my duty keeps hid, to the sight of my eyes mid be shown. In the tallet he stowed her, there huddled she lay, shortening sleeves, legs, and tails to her limbs, but most of the time, in a bad mortal way, well knowing that there'd be the devil to pay, if twere found that, instead of the elements' prey, she was living in lodgings at Tim's. "'Where's the tranter?' said men and boys. "'Where can he be?' "'Where's the tranter?' said Barbary alone. "'Where on earth's the tranter?' said everybody. They sifted in the dust of his parish roof tree, and all they could find was a bone. Then the uncle cried, Lord, pray, have mercy on me, and in terror began to repent. But before twas complete, and till sure she was free, Barbary drew up her loft ladder, tight turned her key, Tim bringing up breakfast and dinner and tea, till news of her hiding got vent. Then followed the custom-kept rout, shout, and flare of Skimmington ride through the neighborhood air. Folk had proof of old Sweetley's decay, whereupon decent people all stood in a stare, saying Tim and his lodger should risk it and pair. So he took her to church, and some laughing lads there cried to Tim, after Sweetley, she said, I declare I stand as a maiden to-day. Written 1866, printed 1875. End of section 44.